I'm here today with Jonna Rice in a doll maker's heaven. Let me tell you why. Especially if you make teddy bears, little monsters, furry friends. This is Intercal. is a company that sells fur for you to make your, your teddy bears and crafts, right? Yes. So, so nice to have you here. First of all, you know, I want to know a little bit about you. Tell me how you came in. You work in an unusual industry today, right? So tell me a little bit about that. It's a very unique yeah. industry, that's for sure. And any time I ever talk to someone about what it is that I do, what? You make <laughs> teddy bears? No, I sell the fabric for teddy bears. Oh, well, how does that all work? So actually, I came into it because it's a family business. It's mm -hmm. my ex-father-in-law's company. Okay. And so I married his son. We had a daughter. And I decided to come work for him. Uh -huh. So over the years, I got rid of his son, but stayed with the company. <laughs> with the company so yeah. here we are. <laughs> this is where it is. We have a great relationship. Nice. And I love the fabric. Mm -hmm. So it's just wonderful to spend the days coming in and working with the mohair and alpaca. Mm -hmm. And We started about 25 years ago. And that's really when the teddy bears started in the United States. Teddy mm -hmm. bears have been for years and years and years. In the United States, they really got popular about 25 years ago. We specialize in just the small, unique artist mm -hmm. rather than the mass-producing. Mm -hmm. So this is more of a cottage industry market. Can we say that you're really not in the toy industry but in the doll maker the artist exactly the, the collector okay. industry absolutely okay. the bears that are made with our fabrics are definitely a high-end collector's mm -hmm. item they're beautiful bears do you think most of your clients are artists that make that or of course they sell eventually or you have people that make a living out of that I think we do have a lot of artists that make a living out right. of that. I think it was more so mm -hmm. a few years ago than as the market kind of got saturated and it got harder to sell the bears and with the economy, of course, everything you know has depleted that way. There got yeah. to be so many that were out there that the smaller ones just couldn't compete because there is so much going on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's just a harder market to keep everything going. And how do you see that going? I am very optimistic and I've been here, you know, 20 25 years and working on another 25 years. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of knowledge that I have that has to do with the industry with the fabric. I love the fabric and I don't ever want to give up working with mohair and alpaca mm -hmm. because I believe in it so much. And not just necessarily for the teddy bear industry but trying to get it into other industries also. For it, example? For example, getting more so into fashion mm -hmm. and home accessories Okay. because it is a renewable resource. The fabric that we have here, the mohair and alpaca, is sheared from the animal. Mm -hmm. So it's not on his skin. No animals are harmed or killed in the making of our fabrics. Mm -hmm. okay. So, And it's a fabric. It's on a cotton backing, mm -hmm. so you can use it for anything. For anything that you want. So it's a real fur mm -hmm. that's environmentally friendly, animal friendly, and can last for years. Mm -hmm. I have started my own company where I am hand dyeing all of our mohair and alpaca fabrics. You know, I, I want to just make a, a note here. We know that when we are able to create things, products and even services, that they are personalized and customized to people, that's what they want. Because one thing that technology did is it's making people, everybody feel the same, like I'm one more out there. So we are all searching to be unique and when we are creating with our hands, we want something really unique that came from our inside, right? I, I call this our inner creatures that come yeah. out of, of us all the time. And so we are looking for unique ways and every time a company starts that offers personalization and customization, they tend to do it really well. So it's right on the trend right now. So what's the, your process with the, this type of work? So I do generally all colors that we don't necessarily carry at Intercal. Mm -hmm. And I do work a lot with the custom colors. I do have artists that contact me. They have a vision. That's the thing with artists is you have a vision. And if you can't find exactly what it yes. is that you're looking for, that vision gets a little bit turned around. Mm -hmm. So this is a nice way that I can work one-on-one -on -one with the artist and create whatever it is that they're looking for. Mohair comes from the Angora goat. 
Those are the goats that have the real Very long, long. Okay. curly, beautiful fleece. So, and then the alpaca is from the alpaca, which is part of the llama family. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. So the farmers are raising these goats and alpacas, and they need to be sheared. They need to be sheared at least twice a year because it just gets too full and heavy for them. The shearing is then mm -hmm. spun into a yarn. And then for our particular fabrics, then that yarn is woven into a cotton backing. And so it's here in the U.S. now? Yes. Yes. There's um, alpaca farmers that are in Northern California. In Texas, there's all kinds of Angora goat farms. Uh -huh. Nice. So it is definitely something that's here in the United States also. So this is mohair, which is the animal hair, and then the cotton backing. Okay. Yeah, because, you know, in the art doll industry, we use mohair for hair, but then it doesn't come like this. And that was another question I had. Okay, I buy mohair, and I cannot make that yeah. hair out of that. So that's the reason why. Yeah, that is two different types there. I think it's mohair locks, maybe, that yes, they use in the yes. art doll. and then you make And that is actually part. the long shearing that actually comes from the goat directly okay, from. from. And it's not woven into the backing. See, now this fabric is like this because the yarn is woven into a cotton backing. So there's several steps yes. that go into making this particular fabric. If you go to a craft store, you have very few options, but they're not the best, right? right. So guide me on that. I'm a real beginner here. So <laughs> what should I be looking for and what are the questions I need to ask before I buy? It really is just the type of bear that you're wanting to make. Are you wanting to make something small? Mm -hmm. Are you wanting to make something full and fluffy? Are you wanting to make something more vintage looking or more, you know, young and, and mm -hmm. updated? So it really kind of depends on what it is the type of bear that you're wanting to make. On our website, we do have pictures of bears that are made up with the particular fabrics. Oh, nice. And we have done that exactly for that reason. Rather than just having a flat scan mm -hmm. of a fabric, and it's kind of hard to tell what yeah. it is or what it would look like on a certain size bear. Mm -hmm. So we actually have everything listed by the quality, which is the length, the density, and the texture of the fabric. Okay, so the length is, of course, uh a bigger bear would use the longer uh, the longer one and a small one would use a short one right uh, the density and, and the mm -hmm. tell me so that is if you're wanting to make a more vintage looking bear then you would use like the shorter on a bigger bear because then it makes it look slim and trim I see. and nice I see. if you are wanting to make a smaller bear that's fuller and fluffier and more then of a new, then you can go with a long one. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you can do trimming around the face, around the eyes, wherever you need to trim to make it work for whatever size bear. The density is the thickness of the fur. Okay. This particular one is a more sparse density because you can see more of the backing. I see. So whereas I see. this one is more of a medium density because you don't see as much of the backing. And then this one is a dense density because you don't see much of the backing wow, at all. So good. Yeah, nice, okay. right? And we do have kid mohair also. So kid mohair oh. actually comes from the first shearing of the oh. Angora goat. So about a year or so? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So just the first shearing and then every shearing mm -hmm. then after that is for the regular mohair. Okay. And as far as the different textures. Mm -hmm. So like the kid mohair, we've put a whirl finish on this where it's just kind of, you know, it whirls okay. around. Okay. Okay. Whereas this is our curly finish, a curly S finish. So it has a little bit more curl on the end mm -hmm. and goes every which way. Every which way is like a distressed. Which the longer ones, we tend to not do super dense just because it gets to be too much too for much. the bear. Uh -huh. Yeah. So it's Sweet. nice to have the long, which I have actually had doll artists that have used the long mohair like this. They just pluck it out. Oh, and really? They and then they it. use an, mm -hmm. oh, and root the hair. Nice, yeah. nice. Yeah. I can do the solid colors. These are some examples of solid pastel colors. Uh, you know, mint has been very yeah, popular. Let me get that because this is so cute. <laughs> so cute. So doing the solid colors where dyeing the fabric is a little more technical because mm -hmm. you are working with two different types of fabric. Okay, yeah. so you're working with a natural fur, which is an animal particle, and then you're also working with a plant fiber, mm -hmm. which is cotton. Both take dyes differently. Wow. So mm -hmm. it's, it's a little bit tricky 
but once you learn how to do it, it's so much fun because you can do so many different things. You can either do colors, the, the backing is the same color as the fur, mm -hmm. or you can get into using different dyes that give you different colored backings compared to different colored furs. So if you're cutting later to, uh, to show the muzzle, for example, then that's you exactly. would have that contrast. That's yes, awesome. that's exactly why you do the backings of the different color because then that way when you do make the bear you can just trim down the muzzle or trim around the eyes yeah, and you, you don't have to do it in inserts. On some of the colors it's hard to photograph mm -hmm. and it's hard to get a facial feature. Doing a different color backing on say a black or uh -huh. a dark color it just gives you that exactly yes. that yes, whole nice. other whole other look and these are more examples of... Look at this color. I can totally see it, <laughs> bear in that. And see, that's in looking, you know, just on the fur side, uh -huh. it looks like it's this beautiful teal green color. But, but then again, once you, you have that, yes. Exactly. Once you trim down that muzzle, then you've got, um, you know, a total black. And same here with this, and then more of a mm. tan color backing. That's fantastic. What are the things they need to do when they go to the website that you think are important? So, for example, you have the, the, the bears there so I can relate to what I want, mm -hmm. right? I know the density and I know the length of the, the wool. Mm -hmm. Is there something else? It's really just a matter of preference as far as you as what you like. Mm -hmm. The best place to go on our website is our In Pieces and Mini Catalog page. Okay. We have everything that we have in stock listed on that one page. Okay. Our website is very large and sometimes it's very easy to get lost. Mm -hmm. So we've purposely made our end pieces and mini catalog page so that an artist can go to that one page and see everything that we have in stock. Now the page works like a swatch sample as far as you can click on the quality number, which again is the length, the density, and the texture, and you can see photos of bears that are made up in that particular quality. Mm -hmm. Then underneath each quality, we have the colors listed. Okay. And each color has its own link also, where again, you can click on the link and it will take you to photos to show you what that color looks like. Now, the color's not necessarily in the same quality that it's listed under, mm -hmm. but it's just, User. it works the same as swatches. Okay. Our swatch samples have kind of become obsolete because we've got the end pieces and you can sit at home and, and be able to look through. at all of the photos. And next to every photo, we do have what size that bear is so you can see oh this is a 15 inch bear that's the way that fur looks on a 15 inch bear. I see, I see. Is there a type of fur that is more popular right now where everything goes? Everything pretty much goes. Um, our SC finish is very, very popular. This, this is one. the one, yeah, that's like the distressed. It kind of goes every which way. It's very easy to work it's with. It's like life right now. It goes every <laughs> single way. <laughs> it's very easy to work with because it does go every which way, so mm -hmm. you don't have to worry about as much how your pattern pieces are laying out. Oh, I see. Whereas something else that's more straight. You have to be careful. You have to be careful, yeah, that you don't get an arm that's mm -hmm. backwards or a leg that doesn't, you know, flow the, the right way. Mm -hmm. So the SC finish and also the curly matted finish, this is very, very popular. Oh, okay. And this is our shortest curly matted. So uh -huh. it's a sparse. You can see a lot of the backing, so it makes a very nice old-time mm -hmm. vintage-looking bear. The curly matted, again, is something that's so curly that it mats down to the backing. Huh. And uh, you don't have to worry about too much the flow of the, the flow. fur. So beginners, so it would be perfect for a beginner. Absolutely, yes, exactly. Yeah, absolutely. And they are they are all very easy to work because they have cotton in the back. That's a. Uh, as far as I heard, actually, that uh, the real fur, for example, from an animal would be extremely difficult to work with if you're yes. a beginner. Yes. Right? Yes. And with this one, you have cotton, so it's easy on the machine and it's everything It's the else. same as working with any other fabric. If mm -hmm. you can sew any other fabric, you can sew this. And then more t techniques that I'm working with in doing hand dyeing, mm -hmm. because I do have more of the control of it, is I'm doing the modeled fabrics. So mm -hmm. this is where I'm modeling the colors together. So wow. it's not a solid color, it's more of a model. So this particular one is a gold color with the with the green modeling, but it has a different uh, colored backing. So uh -huh. then again you can get that contrast in the muzzle. And same with this one, you know, just modeling different colors together, you can do that. Mm -hmm. And then I've also been working with spots. You know, so many artists are not just bears, You're they right. get into dogs yeah. and you know all other animals. So all having friends out there. 
I'm exactly. one of them actually. I, I like to have little creatures more than the bear is in yes. itself. Yes, then yeah. you have more yeah. options here. So working with the spots and I'm working on a technique to do tipping and mm. just trying to expand and make everything And available. of course because you're doing this by hand, I, I, the price point is different than just buying the fur. But it's, can you tell me Actually the what I'm doing because I've worked in this industry for so long and the artists my, are my friends. Mm. I am making all of my hand dyed fabrics the same price as Intracal's in piece prices. Wow, really? So you are getting a custom hand dyed fabric mm -hmm. for the same price that you would be paying. It's all wholesale. Fantastic. We charge wholesale. So pricing. how do they get that? You can go to my website. I do have a separate website okay. from Intercal. There are links to my website on Intercal's website. Okay. But if you want to go directly to my website, it's the T H E Mohair Store. Oh, that's easy. Com. The yes. Mohair Store. Yes. Com. Dot com. Okay. So all the 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 fur that you dye are more mohair. Yes, okay. I do mohair and alpaca. You do the alpaca. And yeah. actually, we are now starting to get into um, viscose. We oh. do have some artists that have requested viscose and synthetics because it's something that hasn't been out there. It's something new and creative that they can work with. So, I am. Um, the synthetics are available through Intercal, and then Intercal and Jonna's Mohair store are carrying the viscose. The viscose. And the viscose that I have, I hand dye. Nice, nice. You know, it, it's important to, to pay attention to trends because if you are an artist that you sell your bears or your dolls, you need to know what the market wants, right? And sometimes we get emotionally attached to some type of material, right? We like that way and we want to keep it that way, but that's not what people want and we need to provide what people want. So yes. you see a trend with the viscose, you switch, right? Absolutely. And that's the way we all should do from a business perspective yes. because then you're always on top of your game yes. on what you're doing. Yes, it's not always exactly what we think or yes. what we like, but it has to be what your customers are wanting. Exactly, exactly. And they are totally gorgeous, all of them. And I saw on the site and actually I bought you have eyes for, for the bears and the joints and everything else that they need. Yes. So tell me where they have to go to check the website. You can go to www.intercaltg.com. Thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs>